Ah, oh, hello everybody! And how are you doing today? Is everybody well? I am so glad to hear that. And me? Oh yes, I am doing just fantastic. I'm still alive and I am in a new year. We're in 2022. Have you got used to writing the date yet? <laughs> Takes a while, doesn't it? So here we are, one week into 2022. I hope that you had a great time over New Year. I did. And I hope that everybody made some wonderful New Year's resolutions. You did make those New Year's resolutions, didn't you? <laughs> oh well. New, Year, New Year's resolutions are great while you're toasting the New Year coming in. But by the time you wake up on New Year's Day, they do tend to evaporate, don't they? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so where are we going to go to today? Well... Silly Grandad, he wrote me, oh, by the way, Silly Grandad is also known as Michael Rowley. If you remember, Michael was here with me during the summer of last year. I can say now last year, since we're in a new year. So he was, uh, he wrote me and he said how good it would be. He says, it would be interesting to see a flight between Phoenix, which is K-P-H-X and Denver, K-D-E-N, to go from high temperature to high altitude. Mm. And I thought, yes, that would be a good one. There's a couple of points, though, to remember, especially at this time of year. First of all, Phoenix is not low altitude particularly. It is 1,135 feet above mean sea level. That's a little bit high, which means it's not particularly hot during this time of year. I just checked online and right now it is showing as 12 degrees Celsius. That's 53 in Fahrenheit. As an aside, Outside here in England, it's also 12 degrees. In fact, we may get up to 14 degrees today. All because of a warm air mass that is sweeping up from the Gulf Stream and is coming in to the southern part of Britain. And it's affecting all of the near European countries as well. So even my friend, Father Ludovic in Italy, is also having 12 and 14 degrees. They're not doing too bad either. Now Denver, on the other hand, Denver is 5,431 feet high. That is quite high. But here's the difference. Right now in Denver is minus 15 degrees Celsius. Minus. That's five degrees Fahrenheit. That is chilly. I also had a quick look and I saw that there is snow going, blowing across the area there and the conditions are IFR. So we would be having some very interesting conditions going into Denver. Now, I've made that flight between Phoenix and Denver several times as a pilot, not in a jet, of course, but in a propeller driven aircraft to twin, a large twin, but it was still a propeller. And um, the scenery was magnificent 
on that route. I mean, it really is. I don't know how it's going to be today with the weather conditions that they're projecting, but we will find out. I've never done it as a jet pilot, so Ryanair 186, well, we can do anything. We can go anywhere. We are Ryanair. Everyone else has to move out of the way, right? <laughs> but today we're going to try that route. So, Michael, thank you for the suggestion, and today we will do it. Now, I did check, and I found that Southwest Airlines does the flight between Phoenix and Denver. And the flight number is 4097. And if you want to look that up on FlightAware, you just type in WN4097. So that's flight 4097. You'll have to go down to the history part because 4097 is also the same flight number that they give to several Southwest Airlines flights. I have no idea why, but that's what you have to do. It's just one of those things. Now, I did get in some very good scenery also. Phoenix KPHX, the Sky Harbor Airport, it is made by Flightbeam. It's a wonderfully detailed, beautifully put together and designed airport scenery. Denver, K-D-E-N, is also by Flightbeam. And again, really superb scenery, very detailed. It's going to be interesting how it's all going to look when we make our approach and landing at Denver, given the snow, but we will have to see. So, Michael, are you ready? Shall we go into pre-flight and see what we're up against? Okay, then, I'll see you in the flight preparation room. Well, here we are in flight preparation and we're looking at Southwest Airlines flight 4097, as you can see up here. These are the, in, that's the information designation. This particular flight arrived over 19 hours ago and at gate C35. It left gate C-19. There's apparently the, that is terminal four. Looking at the route, here we are. And looking at the, they were at 35,000 feet at the highest. Then they dipped to 31. So it looked like it was a step down process to come down into Denver and it looked like the taxi time was 10 minutes and the taxi time at Denver was seven minutes so not too bad on taxi time there's a awful lot of fuel that is often burned off at uh, in those taxi points and I picked this as I showed you here you've got all of the the ones going between these different points. And here's the one, and they're all, by the way, they're all the same flight. Uh, they're all 4097. So I picked this one to look at. It's a 737 and it took one hour and 31 minutes. Right here, is the actual flight routing. Well, we'll be using that as we start to make our own flight plan later on. Well, let's have a look at windy.com. Here we are. Let me just do a quick refresh. Here's the wind and at 59 minutes ago, it was 270 degrees gusting. Oh, look at that. 17 knots gusting to 23. 
Visibility 10 miles, clouds few at 2,800, scattered at 4,100, broken 5,000. Temperature 12 degrees Celsius. And the dew point 9. Altimeter is 29.73, a little lower than uh, standard, but that's not bad. Let me just do a quick refresh. No change. So looking at the runways, if it's going to be uh, the wind at 270, in all likelihood, we'll be taking off in this direction. So we'll be leaving from either 25 left or 25 right. I'm going to bet that we get this one here, which is 25 right. And the reason for it is because this is C, uh, this is Terminal 4, and this is where all of the uh, C stands are. And we will be starting out right here at this one. So I'm hoping that ATC will clear us for a departure on 25 right. I'm going to put it in if it doesn't come up that way. Now, having a look here at Denver. Oh, wow. Wind is 060, five knots, visibility nine statute miles. Currently, ah, currently is VFR, so it has cleared up a little bit. Not necessarily going to have to rely on that, though. Few clouds at 2,500 feet, 5,000 feet, overcast at 9,000 feet. Temperature now is seven, minus 17 degrees. Wow, that is cold. But look at this. The dew point is minus 18. There's only one degree difference between the two, which means that we could get some rather poor visibility moving in very quickly. We don't know. Altimeter is 29.7 inches of uh, mercury there. Having a look at the runways. Well, there's the, there's the airport. It is a big airport. I'm not sure which one we will be coming in at, so we'll have to just simply wait until ATC gives us the clearance. And that will be that. All right, let's go into Sim Brief. And here we go. We are Ryanair. We are 186. We're going to depart from, from Phoenix. And we're going to go to Denver. And KCOS, I'm not sure which one that is. We'll look it up in a moment, is the alternate. Our airframe is right there. And here you can see our registration, E-I-E-N-I, -E profile six. The scheduled flight time is one hour 55. That's uh, from gate to gate. Departure runway 26. I'm going to change that to 25 right. And we'll ask that to change everything. Arrival runway is given here as seven. Not sure if that's actually going to be uh, the one that we will actually land on, but that's what we'll aim for. Passengers, we're full. We still have one ton of cargo. We're still carrying champagne and caviar. Ha! See how many people want to have a, a good drink on this route. <laughs> And there's the current air act cycle. It just changed just a few days ago to 2113. And the route <coughs> and the route is valid, it says. And there it is. There's the route. Ah. Colorado Springs. 
that's it, Colorado Springs. I thought I recognized that, yes. So that's going to be our alternate airport and the elevation is 6,187 feet. So it's higher than Denver. So should we get into any kind of difficulties, then there is where we have to go. All right, we'll save this. I'll leave the altitude as it is and see what, uh, what we get, what it comes up with. So I'll save the flight and then we'll generate the flight plan. Let's see what it gives us. It's bringing in all of the details, building the maps. Here we go. All right. Our cruise altitude is 33,000 feet. There's the block fuel and the air time is 1 hour 18 minutes. And there's the routing. Planned optimum flight level, it says. So there is, there is the route. So let's have a look at the information. This is Ryanair 186. Here is the flight elevation, uh, flight altitude that we're going to be assigned to. KCOS, Colorado Springs, is our alternate. And right here, of course, is the, is the basic routing. We are cost index six. There's the average win for the flight. Right here is the block fuel that we'll need to make sure that we've got in our tanks. Reserves 2,088 plus the trip and taxi. These are factors that we will have to put in. And then down here, is the full routing which I will put online in the description box so that you can follow this yourselves. Now we're proposing that we will be going from 25 right and we're looking at coming in on 07 into Denver. We will have to see. Here's the descent. When we get to 20,000 feet the wind is going to be 239 degrees and 54 knots and the temperature minus 29. And we will need to put in this information as well. So it's going to be a very chilly flight. Hope that you've got some good warm clothing for when we get to Denver. There's no cyclones. <laughs> No volcanic ash, so we're good on that. And then all of the information about uh, Denver and Phoenix are all there, including Colorado Springs in case things go pear-shaped. So let's zoom down and have a look at the weather. Now, uh, there is a little bit of a frontal movement, according to this. It's moving across the area. But we should be fine. We should miss the fronts. But it's going to be the wind that we're going to have to deal with. And it looks like at 30,000 feet, we're going to have mainly tailwinds. Not bad. I like tailwinds. Now this is closer to our flight route. This is 34,000 feet. And you can see here that we've got basically tailwinds going all the way in. Notice these little feathers at the end of the arrows. Well, when they're solid like that, that shows an increase in speed. And here you can see the temperatures minus 43, minus 43, minus 42. So there's a lot of cold temperature. We will certainly have to look at the anti-icing conditions on our journey. And here's our vertical profile. 
Here we go from Phoenix all the way up across the top and these by the way these big things sticking up these are the Rocky Mountains and then all the way down into Denver. So let's have a look at Navigraph charts and see what we can do about building a flight plan. Well, here we are, Navigraph charts. So we click on flights. We come in with a new flight from SimBrief and we bring this one up. And there's our route. Click on Phoenix, open the charts list. We are going to need to know airport info. We're going to need to know the parking gates and the parking gate coordinates. It's showing that we'll be using the Mirabel One departure. So here's the Mirabel One departure. So I'll pin that to the bottom. Let's have a look and see what it is. Well, here we make the departure and then we swing to the right and then go up to I'm presuming that's what that is called is Mirabel up here. And then going into Denver, opening the charts, we will need to know about the airport. It would be we're planning to come in to Concourse C, which is where all of the Southwest Airlines come in. So I'll put that one up there, too. It's proposing that we're coming in on runway seven. So I'll get this one in prepared and add that one. And looking at the overlay. So it looks like we'll be coming in in this direction. That wouldn't be bad because I think Concourse C is down at the lower end. So it might work out rather well for us. And looking at the stars, it looks like it's the TBARR. So let's have a look for that. And there it is. There's the TBAR and I'll pin that. And let's look at this one. So here's the basic approach. And if it follows, it looks like we'll be coming in on coming up to Epic and then making our approach in that way. OK, we can put all of this together. Right. I think we have all the information now that we need. So let's have a look at this. We're going to be coming in to runway seven. ILS on runway seven. Let's see what it brings us. There it is. And if we look at the. There it is. So that is going to be our route coming in to Denver. And should things go well, not comfortable, then here is our departure and missed approach procedure. And just down here is Colorado Springs, so we don't have very far to go. OK, I think that we're now all set. So if you're ready, Michael, let's go on into the cockpit and get Ryanair 186 all warmed up. Ah, oh, there you are, Michael. Come on in, take your seat. You've been in here before, so you know where everything is at. And we are all set. I've been around. I had my umbrella because look outside. It is chucking it down with rain. Yes, this is the desert, but this is also the rainy bit of the year for Phoenix. So we have rain. 
And I went out there under my umbrella and kicked the tires. I didn't do much with the windows though. Tried to clean them, but it kept raining. What can I say? Right, let's get ourselves started. Are you ready? Okay. Now, we're parked at Terminal 4 and we're at Stand D6. That's where we're at. So that's our starting point here in Phoenix today. Right, first thing we do, we turn on the battery. We check that we have some voltage up here. Turn on the fuel pumps, making sure everything is looking good. We've already checked the fire system, made sure all of that is correct. So that's that part has been done. So the next thing we'll do is we'll start the APU down here. Now, just as a little matter of interest, this little tablet that I have down here, which of course I record everything to show to show my roots and my position down at the bottom corner. And I noticed that when I updated this one to Windows 11, it was a rather curious thing happened. As you know, you can record the screen from within Windows itself. And Windows 10 worked perfectly. But Windows 11, not so good. I had set it for 60 frames per second in order to get the maximum amount of clarity and detail, but it came out 13 or 14. I mean, it was all over the place. So I noticed that for the last video that I did, and it was not good. Oh, here we go. We now have 115 volts coming in off the APU. So I've restored this to Windows 10 until they can fix the problem. I've no idea what the cause was, but there you are. So I discovered a glitch and that is what we've had to do. We've now got the APU on, so I'm going to turn on the galley. Turn on the emergency exit lights. No smoking, fasten seat belts. If you notice here, there are two lights on. That's for the equipment, that's for the air stairs going down, and for the forward service hatch. And it is a little bit wet for our self-loading cargo, but they're coming on board anyway. All right, I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat. And yes, in this kind of weather, I'm definitely going to turn on the probes. And electrical hydraulic pumps. And then over here, I'm going to turn on the packs and the bleeds for, listen. There it is. There's that rush of compressed air taking now heat throughout the cabin because at 12 degrees it's a little on the cool side and we need to warm things up a little bit for our passengers. All right now that we've got all of that set and everything is looking good down here for the basics now we need to start to program the FMC. So I'll clear the messages at the bottom, go to the initialization, and then for the airport we are at KPHX. We're at gate D6. I'm going to see if D6 is in here. Not in the database. So there's not much we can do about that. So we'll have to then check with the screens for the parking gate coordinates. And we are at Terminal 4 and D4, which is 
33269 and if you look up here that's the position so I'm going to put that in we'll put the information in right there just like that now we're we've got the GPS set so I go to the route and we are starting out from KPHX and we're going to go to KDEN we are Ryanair 186 so I'll do RYR 186 and then go to next page and this is where I'm going to start to put in the information that we've got from our routing. So the first thing that we do is we go to JARPA, J-A-R-P-A. -A. And then we go direct to SHNPS. And that is our basic route. So we activate that, execute, go to the fix and put in KDEN for our destination. We want a four mile radius. That will tell us when to drop the gear. We'll need a 10 mile radius. We'll need to be flaps 10 and getting ourselves very much set up for landing at that point and then we'll need the 30 mile radius that will tell us as soon as we're inside the range for the controller in the tower and in P3D you need to be 30 miles or less in order for the tower to pick you up We'll go to the descent, go to forecast. Now, transition level in the United States is 180. So we'll put that in, and we need the information for 20,000 feet, for 15,000 feet, and for 10,000 feet. The Q and H at our destination is 1006. So 1006. And then we'll need to put in the descent information for these three flight levels. So at 20,000 feet, it is 239 at 54. At 15,000 feet, it is 236 at 27. And at 10,000 feet, it is 341 and 2. And then we execute that. Go to departures. Now, before we put this information in, we need to tune in to the ATIS to find out what the airport information is. An ATIS is 127.57. So 127.57. Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport Information Kilo 2004 Zulu Wind 250 at 17 visibility greater than 20 miles in light rain sky condition few clouds at 2,900 4,000 scattered ceiling 5,000 broken temperature 1 2 dew point altimeter 8 1 0 0 8 landing and departing one way 2 5 right one way 2 5 left and one way 2 6 VFR aircraft say direction of flight all aircraft read back hold short instructions advise controller on initial contact you have kilo well, we have Kilo, and it looks like 25 right is in use. So we will ask for 25 right since we're right next to it. And then we'll put in the, uh, the departure. And we're using the Mirabel 1 departure. So I'll go down here looking for Mirabel 1. There it is, Mirabel 1. 
So we have our departure information, execute that. Go to arrivals at Denver. We're looking at coming in on ILS 07. So I'll put that one in. And then it's talking about the T-Bar 3 approach on the star. So look for the T-Bar 3 on 07. That's right there. And we're coming in on the snaps. So we'll execute that. Now I'm going to go to the flight plan and we're going to have a look at the route to see how the route works out in the legs. So, going up, looks like everything is following nicely. There's Mirabel, there's Joppa, there's Schnapps, Vibro, Lifty, Menard coming in and then we need to go to Sarah. So we'll put the Sarah up to here, execute that, and then it makes that nice neat line up here to come in onto the final. Right, we have a flight plan. Right, I'm going to put the weather on here, data, terrain over on your side, Michael, and I'll put the data on there too so that you have the information. I'll turn the TCAS on so that everybody knows that they have an active aircraft here. And that is 1009 for the pressure. All right, turning that to RTO. All right, we're looking good across the board. Everything has looked good. Our passengers are all on, so bring up the stairs and close the door. Right, I've got the Navigraph charts map working here. Now I'm going to turn on the your damper. The flight continuity light went out, which is good. And now we're ready to go and put in the initialization. Now our planned fuel today, we have reserves of 2088 plus the trip of 3627. That comes to 5,715 or 5.7. So we'll do 5.7 for the plan fuel and 2.1 for the reserves. Double clicking this makes it calculate. We'll do cost index six. We are flying at flight level 330 today. So we'll put that up there. The cruise wind is 25059. 25059, that's strong. The transition altitude in the US is 180. And then we can execute that go to the N1 limit. They're showing 10 degrees here. Oh, that is cold. Cold for Phoenix anyway. And take off. We're going to go flaps 10. Double click for the center of gravity. And it says that the trim wheel should be set for 4.73. And then one click on each of these will give us the V1 rotation and B2 liftoff speed. So we've got that information now. We'll go over here and we'll put 33,000 feet in this. This is our cruising altitude, the flight altitude for pressurization. The elevation at, of the runway, of the airport anyway, at our destination it's 5,434 feet. 
So we'll put in 5,000. 400 and 50 that's the closest to the 34 we round it out as best we can all right steady light is on okay we've got that now i'll put it into here i'm always anticipating our flight altitude i know since we'll be departing on runway 25 right, we need to do 258 in our course setting. So I'll do 258 over here. 258 into the heading here. Shall I do yours, Michael? Okay. And then 258 over here for you, Michael. Now we'll do the max speed here, which is 145. Good. Everything is looking good. Put the flight director on, and then click on both of these buttons here, VNAV and LNAV, and I get a green light on both, showing that we have a good flight plan. Put the auto throttle arm up there, VOR and VOR over here. Now the frequency of the localizer on runway 7 in Denver is 111.55. So I'll need to make sure that that is, is set up. And I'll put in the ATIS once we have departed. All right, we're looking good so far. So let's get in touch with the tower and ask for a departure, shall we? We're going to depart to the north, so we'll do that one. Ground Ryanair 186 with Mike request taxi for takeoff departure to the north. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 25 right via taxiway 4 Delta Delta 1 2 Echo Echo 1 3 contact tower on 1 2 0 point liner when ready Taxi hold short runway 25 right via taxiway 4 Delta Delta 1 2 Echo Echo 1 3 Ryanair 186 Well we have our clearance Okay let's do the checklist Fuel is, check is good, windows are locked. <laughs> See, they're all locked. <laughs> uh, Seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out, so everything is up and ready there. MCP is, is set, takeoff thrust, the bugs are all set. CDU pre flight is complete. Rudder airline trim is all done. Taxi takeoff briefing now. Since we are going to need to go in that Ground, direction to get, with Mike. Ready to, taxi IFR. to get to the active runway, then we'll need to push back, have our tail go to the left and our nose to the right, okay? And anti-collision light is now going on. So, we're ready now to contact the nice people on the ground and ask them to give us a pushback. Are you all set? All, all good? No problems? In that case then I'll ask for the pushback. So we'll go standard left, turn nose to the right, select the tug and then here we go. Target to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback. Tail to the left. Release parking brake, please. Parking brake is released. Brakes released. Which engine would you like to start today? One or two? Here we go. 
number two all right we'll turn off the air conditioning and then I'm going to switch this to number two and then we'll start engine number two over here looking over here the start valve has opened and the you can see the N2 is winding up when that gets to 24 I'll introduce the fuel to the engine there it is so there the fuels going in you can start to see it's all building up very nicely here it's spinning up in a moment the low pressure light it just went out and we should start to hear the engine kick in in just a moment there it is you hear the engines that's it we have a good start okay and up here we have 115 volts so now i'm going to switch to generator number one and we'll start engine number one hello the start valve has opened so we've got pressure going in the n2 is winding up Parking brake set. Parking brake is set. In a brake moment, set. this will get to 24, and I'll bring up the. There it is. I'm now bringing up the fuel to it. Now we're looking for this to start to build up, and it's Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the slip relation pads on your right. Have a good flight. Thank you. And this little tick over here. That indicates that the generators on the main engines are working as they should. So when that stabilizes out, and there's the other engine. And the lights have gone out. As soon as that tick mark has disappeared, then we know we have stabilization. So now, I'm going to switch to the main engines for our electricity, turn on the heat for the cabin, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Now I'm going to turn on the taxi lights, and I'm going to turn on the, anti the steady light and strobe. Okay, everything is looking good. I'm going to go to flaps 10. Verify the takeoff speeds. Make the adjustment right there. And now we are set to go and taxi down there to get to the end of runway 25 right. Okay. Are you ready then? Okay. All right. Generators are on, probe heat is on, anti-ice not required at the moment. Isolation valves are correct. Engine start levers idle, detent. Flight deck door is low, closed and locked. Recall, check. Flight controls are checked. Flaps, we have 10 and green light. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake is RTO. Speed brake lever down and detent. Ground equipment is now clear. So we are clear to taxi to the active. So brake off. And give a little bit of juice here to get ourselves unstuck. And then we'll go over here to our taxi line and follow this and then turn right on this one make sure nothing's coming the detail the detail 
detail is incredible. And over there, there's an aircraft coming in. Here's the threshold coming up for runway 25 right. We are right on top. So I'm going to and stop here and contact the tower. And we want clearance to take off. We are cleared for takeoff, engines continuous. Please correct, start switches continuous. Cabin is secure. We are set and clear to land. And starting the clock. And going out into position. We are cleared to depart.
more interesting once we start getting to the Rocky Mountains and go into Denver because there things can get very interesting. So in order to get you prepared why don't you go and have a quick rest let our excellent cabin staff treat you to champagne and caviar and then when we're on our approach and descent and approach into Denver I'll make sure that you're aware and come back up so that we can land 186 in Denver. How does that sound? Is that good? Great.
position and altitude. Alright, have you, my, uh, Michael, have you got your seatbelt fastened? Yeah, I'm all He's all secure. Ha! I wish I was. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to bring up the chart for the approach. has got his charts opened up in front of him so he can see what we're doing. Now I'm going to be making a beeline for Sarah in just a moment and then I'll be making a right turn onto final. So essentially I'm now in a moment I'll be entering on base leg. I'm now turning onto base leg. I'm turning now in the direction of Sarah. Now according to this chart, I'm supposed to be 9,000 feet or above. And there's a good reason for that. I think they're called mountains. <laughs> So are you you still able to see all right? Okay, good, good, good. All right, I'm going to contact the tower if I can get them on here.
So I've switched things around and I'm hoping I'll be able to make a landing this time and not make a mess of things. We are of course in the middle of some thick murky cloud. There is snow so I do have anti-ice on there. We are minus 11 degrees and we're on set to land on runway 07 whether they're ready for us or not. So, Michael, we are five miles from Sarah, the waypoint Sarah, where we turn on to uh, final. And it is pretty bad out here. Yet. 
Oh, I can see the Vazi lights ahead. You see the Vazi through the murk? Well, we're on track to land. And I am committed. We're at 7,000 feet. And descending, I'm going to 11,000 feet on the altitude in case of a missed approach. Everything is set. There's the runway. We're on course to land. There's the airport ahead of us. I have it in sight. And... <laughs> hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. I have control, I think. All right. And now, four miles, we're going down to gear. Gear down. Full flaps. One thousand. One thousand. And descending. Can you see it all right there, Michael? I'm just 
getting rid of the uh, tower so I can hear you. What did you say? No, no, came right down on the point, yeah. And the speed was right. I came down and I touched down at about 143. Yeah. Floated right onto it. Now I'm coming up at that building that's that you see where it says number nine. The visibility here is pretty poor. Now that I'm on the ground, the scenery is absolutely magnificent. This is by Flight Beam, you know. Flight Beam designed this. And my, my frame rate now that I'm on the ground is 14. I'm 14 frames per second on the ground. That's not bad considering the detail. That's true, that's true. Now I'm going to go out here and then go up Gulf. So I'm just crossing over. The fire station is on my right. And then I'm going to turn up Hotel. So let me turn left here. Stick my hand out. Uh, You've been pleased. I'm sticking my hand out, turning left. There's the snow plows on the right. I think if I picked a fight with those, I would probably lose. going straight up hotel. I'm just passing that is uh, Concourse Alpha. This one coming up is Concourse Bravo and the one after it that's still in the midst of it is Concourse Charlie. This is the Bravo Sierra crosswalk I'm going across now. Yeah, that's, that's Concourse Bravo to my right, yes. How's the view? Is the view angle good? I mean, it's not too tilted too down, or should it be up a bit or down a bit? Well, you've, you've actually got the line of sight from the first officer's perspective, straight down the glare shield. Uh-oh, I hope that World Airlines isn't going to play chicken with me. Well, that's Bravo I've just passed, so I am going to turn in here to get out of his way. Kamikazes are everywhere. It's hard to see where the line is, you know. Well, I'm going to go up here until I see one that will take me to the left. And there's got to be one here somewhere. And there's another aeroplane out there wants to play chicken with me. Don't they know that we are Ryanair and we give way to nobody? Alright, here we go. I can cut in here. This is, uh, this looks like an access point. Denver Tower, World Travel 3634 is 1.8 miles south inbound by LS. There we go. There's the, there's the taxi line. And there's Charlie 3-0 up ahead. 
I'll look for three four. See if I can get into three four. Oh, there's three four. It is so hard to see the ground markings here. And there's three, four. That's it. There we go. And whoa, break on. Engines off. Start the shutdown. Lights off. And TCAS off. Barometer off. Laps are up. And stairs and hatch are opening. Can you hear that all right? Can you hear the, the hatch opening and the stairs going down? All right, the your damper is off, IRS is off, APU galley is off, exit lights are off, probes off, and hydro pumps are off, and fuel pumps are off, and APU is off, battery is off. Shutdown is complete. We're here. What do you think, Michael? I like it. It's really cool. You had a definite front row seat. What do you think? Yeah, he had a front row seat, didn't he? Best seat in the house. Best seat in the house. Yeah, but you realize that had there been any trees or aeroplanes in the way, you would have seen them close first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, that was a bit of an experiment to see how this would work. And it looks like it has worked rather well. Michael Rowley is our silly granddad of uh, YouTube fame. He was the one that requested the flight today and we have done him proud. We made sure that even though COVID and restrictions and all the rest of that nonsense is still in place, Michael, you can still fly with Ryanair 186. And would I fly with any other airline? Never, never. <laughs> right. Welcome to Denver, everybody. I'm glad you were able to join me today. And I hope that today's flight was a good one for you as well. So we will see you on the next flight. Thank you as they say in the posh circles, for flying Ryanair 186. <laughs> Bye, everybody.